only about 40% of med school applicants get into medical school each given year. So basically what that means is you as an applicant need to do whatever you can in order to increase your chances of getting an acceptance to medical school. And so in this video, I'm gonna be going over the top 10 easiest DO medical schools to get into. Now, before we get into these top 10 schools, I need to tell you guys about something extremely, extremely important. And it's essentially how to go about applying to medical schools. Now, I promise this will only take a quick second and then we'll get right into the top 10 easiest DO medical schools to get into. So the first thing that you wanna keep in mind when applying to medical school is if your undergraduate institution actually has a medical school as well. Because if it does, this is probably gonna be your best shot at getting into medical school. Now, there's a variety of reasons for this, but I'm not gonna go into them right now. Just know that if your undergraduate institution has a medical school connected to it, it's probably your best shot of getting into a medical school. The second thing you guys need to keep in mind is when applying to medical school, you wanna first apply to all of your state schools. And the reason for this is because state-funded medical schools are required to accept a certain percentage of in-state residents. And so that percentage is generally pretty high, right around 70 to 80% of their incoming classes are gonna be from the state that the school is in. Now, when applying to medical schools, the third thing you wanna keep in mind are private medical schools. Now, private medical schools don't care if you're in-state or out-of-state, their tuition that they receive from you is gonna be the same whether you're from the state that the school's in or you're from out of state. The reason that they don't really care about your residency status is because they don't receive funding from the state, hence the word private. Whereas a lot of your state medical schools will actually have two different tuitions, one for in-state residents, which is usually much cheaper, and then one for out-of-state residents, which is usually much higher. And so if cost is something that's worrying you with regards to going to medical school, then your best shot at going to a cheaper medical school will be the school that's in your state. All right, so with that being said, let's get into the top 10 easiest DO schools to get into. And before I show you the list, I wanna just mention that getting into medical school is by no means easy. Just because I'm saying that these schools are easier to get into versus other schools really just has to do with the GPA and the MCAT that they're willing to accept. Now, as I go through these schools, you guys are gonna see that the MCAT and GPA averages really aren't that low. And so if you still aren't meeting some of these minimum requirements that I'm gonna go over, I've made a ton of videos on how to kind of bypass the whole minimum MCAT and GPA requirement when it comes down to getting into medical school. Um, and so you guys can click on this link right here. It'll show you a really great video on how I was actually able to get into medical school with only having a 2.7 science GPA as well as a 494 MCAT. And so if you guys are in that same or similar boat that I was in about a year or two ago, definitely check out that video because there are a few ways in which you can kind of manipulate the system. All right, so let's get into my list of 10, and I actually think I have 11 schools, which is great news for you guys, um, but just keep in mind that these aren't really in any particular order. I did try to go from like the easiest to the more difficult schools, but in all reality, your chances of getting into one of these schools versus the other really isn't very significant. All right, so I'm gonna actually reference my computer for this. Um, and so and so basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be telling you guys the school's name. I'm going to be telling you guys if they have any minimum MCATs or GPAs. And then I'm also going to tell you guys um, the average accepted MCAT and GPA. Um, there are a few um, notes I wrote down here for some specific schools. And so I'll definitely mention those to you guys because they are really important. But definitely keep watching because there is one school that I know of for sure that doesn't require an MCAT. And I'm gonna be talking about that a little bit later on in the video. All right, so the first school is Arkansas College of Osteopathic Medicine. They don't have a minimum GPA. They don't have a minimum MCAT. Their average accepted GPA is a 3.5 and their average accepted MCAT is a 500. Um, they did note that 
most um, applicants that get accepted have above a 500 MCAT and for them that is considered competitive. So definitely keep that in mind if you decide to apply to RCOM. Now the second school is called Kentucky College of Osteopathic Medicine at Pikeville. They don't have a minimum GPA or MCAT. Their average GPA is a 3.5 and their average MCAT is a 500. Now the third school is Oklahoma State College of Osteopathic Medicine. They have a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.0. They have a minimum science GPA of 2.7. And then they have a minimum MCAT of a 492. Now their average GPA of students that get accepted is a 3.6. And keep in mind, all of these average GPAs are relatively their science GPAs. Um, and so just keep that in mind that their cumulative GPA averages are probably 0.1 higher. And so their average MCAT of acceptance is a 500. Keep in mind, Oklahoma State um, College of Osteopathic Medicine is a state school. And so they're really only going to accept mostly Oklahoma residents. And from my experience, the amount of out-of-state applicants that they accept is only about 15 to 20% of their incoming classes. So if you're not from Oklahoma, it's probably not in your best interest to apply to this school. Now the fourth school is West Virginia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Minimum GPA 3.2, minimum MCAT 495, average GPA of acceptance 3.54, and then average MCAT of 502. Now um, Virginia College of Osteopathic Medicine accepts quite a few out-of-state um, applicants and they had listed about 80% of their incoming class is not even from the East Coast. So the fifth school I have is Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine and that's in New Mexico. They have a minimum GPA of 3.0 a minimum MCAT of 493. So this is one of those schools that if you have a decent GPA and you just don't have a good MCAT, you might wanna look into applying to this school. They have an average GPA of acceptance of 3.5 and an average MCAT of 502. The sixth school is Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. There's no minimum GPA. There's a minimum MCAT of 500. The average GPA of acceptance is 3.4. And then the average MCAT is a 504. The next school I have is DeBusk College of Osteopathic Medicine at Lincoln Memorial University. They don't have a minimum GPA or MCAT, so you don't have to worry about that. Their average GPA of acceptance is a 3.4 and their average MCAT of acceptance is a 501. Now the next school we have is located in Texas, and so the majority of the people that will be accepted into the school are Texas residents. They had listed about 75% of their incoming class is from Texas. So if you're not from Texas, probably don't apply to this school. It's the Incarnate Word College of Osteopathic Medicine. There's no minimum GPA or MCAT, and their average GPA is a 3.5, and their average MCAT is a 503. The ninth school on my list is LECOM, and this is the school that I wanted to talk to you guys about. So if you're still watching this video, you're definitely gonna benefit from what I have to say. So first, I'll just tell you guys their MCAT and GPA stuff. Um, minimum GPA of a 2.7, there's no minimum MCAT, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second. There's an average GPA of 3.4 and an average MCAT of a 503. Now, LECOM uses something called an academic index score, and it's where you can apply to their medical school using either your ACT, your SAT, or you can even use both. So if you did really well on the ACT or SAT, and you're kind of worried about the MCAT, you don't necessarily have to take it. What they do is they combine your undergraduate GPA with your ACT or SAT scores, and it kind of spits out a number for them to compare you to people that actually took the MCAT. And so I think this is a really good option for people that didn't do well on the MCAT or simply don't want to take the MCAT. However, I do have a reservation with this. You kind of put yourself at a disadvantage if you don't take the MCAT because 
you're gonna be compared to people that took the MCAT. And so you can only imagine how they might look at your application knowing you didn't take the MCAT. So just keep that in mind if you plan on applying to LeeCom, um, but it's definitely a great option if you don't wanna take the MCAT. So the 10th school is Ohio Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine. They don't have a minimum GPA. They have a minimum MCAT of a 490, and then their average accepted GPA is a 3.6, and the average MCAT is a 505. Now I said I did have 11 schools, so the final school is the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, they have a minimum GPA of 2.8, a minimum MCAT of a 490, and then an average accepted GPA of a 3.5, and an average MCAT of 504. So guys, those are the top 11 schools that I found that could potentially be an easier way into medical school. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, getting into medical school, it's no joke, it's pretty difficult, and it's very competitive, even when applying to some of these easier schools to get into. If you guys follow what I said at the very beginning of the video about applying to your state school and if your undergraduate university has a medical school, those are probably going to be your best bets at getting into medical school, followed by applying to private schools because they really don't care where you're from. They simply just want your money. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it's kind of true. Um, they are pretty expensive, but they do, for the most part, look at all applicants equally with regards to where you're from. So guys, if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. It did take a little bit of time to kind of look up these numbers um, so that I could give you guys some accurate information. So give this video a like. Um, and I got all of this information off of these specific schools' websites. So if any of the numbers are inaccurate, um, there's probably some discrepancies on the actual websites of these schools, um, but I'm pretty sure that most of these numbers are fairly accurate. So with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Um, just reminding you guys one last time, and I'll see you in my next video.